A lack of boundaries invites a lack of respect. The reality is that when we are engaging with someone, specifically having a romantic relationship with an individual, we have to understand that everyone doesn't know what line should not be crossed. Everyone doesn't understand what you may find inappropriate, what may be offensive to you, what is going to cause problems. We have a bad habit of assuming that, well, if this is a grown adult, they should know better. Or, you know, we just think people should have a better idea that this should be common sense. But common sense isn't always so common. And it's important that we not only discuss these issues, but we establish what those boundaries are. Now, for you as a woman, I believe there are some, what I've seen as a coach, common occurrences, common issues that arise in relationships where people don't understand what the boundaries should be. And if we just nip this in the bud in advance, we could eliminate a lot of headache, a lot of fighting, a lot of unnecessary drama. So one of the first boundaries you need to set with men in a relationship is boundaries when he hangs out with his friends, all right? And let's, let me be more specific, his male friends. We'll, we'll talk about women later on in the video, all right? So male friends. One of the reasons why I felt the need to address this, right? I, I have a membership group. We were, in, we were having one of our live Q&As. And in there, long story short, one of my members asked about, she has a guy that she's in a relationship with. He's going on a bachelor party, going to a bachelor party. The bachelor party, I believe, is in some state, might be Vegas. I, don't, I can't remember. I don't think it was the Dominican Republic. But either way, it's somewhere else. And it's already been said that there will be strippers involved, more specifically going to a strip club. Now, in this situation, she felt some kind of way about strippers and strip clubs and felt like, you know, it's completely inappropriate for this man to even be in a strip club while he's in, in a relationship with her. So they discussed it. Or she, you know, yeah, they discussed it. And he kind of said, okay, well, listen, he'll opt out. But if everyone decides to go and he's the only one, he's going to end up probably going. Okay. So then she kind of shifted to, all right, well, fine, fine. You, you're going to go, but you shouldn't be getting any dances. You shouldn't be touching on any women, so on and so forth. Now, I had to explain that this is going to be very difficult for, for any man to accomplish because when a man is around his friends, you know, listen, let's be real. There, there's a lot of influence there. There's also the, 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 the idea that, okay, it's not a big deal. We're just having fun. And, and when we're talking about the strip club, it's like, okay, I'm not taking any of these women home. I'm not trying to do anything with them. I'm just trying to enjoy myself. And what I had to get her to understand, or one of the things that we talked about was just one these are some of the things you have to have discussions about in advance. And in this scenario, to say, okay, well, you can go to the strip club, but you can't touch on the girls, it's almost like, listen, either we agree that he's allowed to go to the strip club or he just shouldn't go at all. Because once he's there, trying to fully control himself is going to be hard. His friends might send a woman his way. He won't know how to handle it. Now, this point about boundaries with friends ain't just about strip clubs because everybody doesn't go to the strip club. But it is about discussing what you deem appropriate and inappropriate when he is out with his homeboys. Because, yes, again, not that all his friends, single or not, are trying to influence him to do bad, right? But when men get together, the reality is that it can get a little, I don't want to use the word wild, <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to let loose a little bit, okay? So discussing things like appropriate times to come home at night, because again, you should not assume that this man has a time that he knows is in sync with what you deem okay, all right? To him, it might be if I'm home by 2 a.m. in the morning, there shouldn't be any problems as long as I was calling and letting you know where I was at. To you, 12 past 12 o'clock with your homeboys might be a problem. This needs to be talked about in advance before we get there. Um, as well as, yes, what kind of places 
are off the table or going to cause a huge problem. If you find out he was in a strip club or if you find out he was at some kind of a party where there was other single available women there, what are the things that are going to cause issues with you? Now, here's something that you have to understand about this discussion and here's why it needs to happen as early as possible. Sometimes this talk is going to lead to seeing that you two are not on the same page. And rather than trying to force the issue, you will have to accept or you should accept this is not going to work. Because if, for example, you are dealing with a man who wants to be able to go out with his friends, who doesn't want to have such restrictions on him. But for you, that is a big problem. If you sweep that under the rug, you're just wait, you're just basically setting up a ticking time bomb. Because he's gonna do it at some point, and you're gonna get pissed. And now we have a bigger problem on our hands. And I always say these little, not little, but these issues that some may deem small will domino and snowball into bigger, bigger problems. So you've got to understand when, for example, I'll use me. I'm someone who likes freedom. I'm just going to be real with you, okay? I cannot have a partner who's all up under me 24-7, who's going to take issue with me going here and there. And here's the reality. Anyone who knows me knows I don't really go out anyway, all right? I'm, I'm pretty much willing to stay home, chill, other than when I'm traveling, I got to do work. However, when I feel like going out, I don't want to have to worry about all this concerns and restrictions. Of course, yes, there are lines that even I understand are inappropriate to cross, but I know men in marriages, they can't go on trips with their friends, all right? And I know some of y'all may say, well, why does he need to go on a trip with any of his friends? Well, his partner is able to. There are plenty of women that go on trips with their friends, but then won't want their man to do the same thing. And so now, again, I'm not even here to call out the double standard because there's various reasons why that might be the case, right? I'm just here to say, if he's someone like me, like if, if a woman said to me, listen, I am not okay with you ever want to go on a trip with your friends and I'm not there. I'm going to have to say we won't work. We won't work. And, and it's not even that I may be wanting to go on a trip with them. To, I, I can't even remember the last time I was on a, a guy's trip. However, I want the ability to do so if I feel like it. I don't want to feel like I have to worry about what my girl's going to say, you know what I'm saying, if I bring it up. So that would be an example of, okay, we're just, we're not on the same page and there's nothing wrong with that. But again, I'm trying to think, is there anything I'm missing right now? And just again, in regards to hanging out with the friends, you just want to make sure you have those discussions. The other thing that popped in my head I don't see this as as common of an issue because most men, in my opinion, won't engage in this when they're dealing with a woman they're really into. But the the sharing your personal and even sexual business with the friends. All right. Some men got a big mouth. All right. Some men gossip, you know, and, and things of that nature. And some men may feel free and that may make you feel very uncomfortable. So again, these are things you want to have discussions about in advance so that we're not finding ourselves in a, a heated issue later on down the road. All right, next boundary you need to set with men in relationships is boundaries with his mother, all right? Now, of course, this is not gonna be an issue for everyone, right? But in my position, I've seen plenty of relationships be very negatively impacted by the man's mother, all right? And his inability to create boundaries with her and create what I believe should be an order of priority in the relationship. Now, let me be clear, and some of you may disagree with this. I am a firm believer in, in God's way of lining it up. You have spouse, you have kids, you, you, you have work, you know, everything else. And I understand that we're saying relationships. So right now, what if you guys aren't married yet? The problem is because dating and relationships have essentially become these, in a, in a way, these trial marriages where people are essentially doing in boyfriend, girlfriend relationships what they back once upon a time you only did in a marriage. 
it's hard for me to advise this without considering that you still have to you still have to apply some of the things you're going to be doing if you were to get married right now. Also because if we don't have a, at least an understanding, even if it's not a full implementation of it, if we don't at least have an understanding of what the structure should be, what we agree upon it being, because listen, some of you ladies might feel like, no, 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 his, his mother can be number one always above me. If that's your thing, so be it. I'm saying it with this hesitation because I know what it leads to in certain situations, but that is your choice. But whatever that structure is that you agree upon, we need to start at least having an understanding of it immediately because you don't want, if for example, he doesn't have boundaries with his mother, he prioritizes her over you, right? There's no discussion and understanding about what's expected if we move on to the next level. And then what's going to happen is he's going to carry over his habits and ways with her over into the marriage. And you will not be able to now change his direction on things. You're not going to be able to tell him, well, now you have to leave your mother out of it. Or, or, or now, you know, you can't be giving her all this time when I need you over here. That discussion will be so much more difficult because he's already accustomed and conditioned to doing it a certain kind of way and accustomed and conditioned to you accepting it being a certain kind of way. So we have to have that talk in a relationship, I, honestly, I even think while we're getting to know each other, it's not a bad topic to, to discuss. How do we view parental roles in our relationships? What is the impact of family and friends? How, how do we have boundaries in, in those situations? Because again, so many people have been derailed because of that. The other thing, going back to the prioritizing of mom or you, don't get me wrong. The mother, the man should honor his mother, all right? He should love his mother. She should be a priority in his life. But again, you have these scenarios where the mother does not fully respect the woman that he's with and the relationship that he's in. And because she has the leverage of being number one priority, she takes advantage of it. She, she, she uses it against that woman. You know what I'm saying? And my spirit is hitting me, so I have to say this. Some mothers, unfortunately, have made their sons their man. All right? Their sons are their husbands in a way. And they don't want to let their husband go to any woman. All right? And so they wreak havoc in their son's relationships because they are territorial and they don't like the fact that now time is being taken away from them or that they don't feel as much of a priority. And so what those women will do is flex their muscles to be like, mm -mm, he's my man. You ain't taking him. And I chuckled, but it's really not that funny of a situation because it's unfortunate. There's a lot of deeper issues that need to be resolved to address it. Now, I also feel the feel need to say this to you as a woman. It is not your job as a woman to regulate his mother. It is not your job as a woman to have to constantly check her. Now, don't get me wrong. If you and her ever come into a situation where you have a disagreement or you end up having, you know, tension with each other, I'm not saying you two should not address it. But when she is becoming a negative factor in the relationship, it is up to him to set that boundary. So again, getting back to the point here is we need to discuss what that is. We need to discuss, you know, in some cases, how he lets her talk to you. All right. What is acceptable or not? Just because she is his mother does not give her free reign to speak to you in a disrespectful or condescending way. And so once we've had that established, if she crosses that line, he then has to respectfully check her and let her know, no, 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 you don't talk to my partner like that. That's not what we do here. You know what I'm saying? Um, it may be when it comes to finances. There are some men who feel like, well, whatever my mother asks for, she gets it. Now, here's the thing. If you're in a relationship where your finances are very separate, um, you guys haven't gotten to that stage where you're really mixing it together a lot, okay, then there's an argument to be made that he's at a stage where he can do what the hell he wants with the money because it's not it, at that stage, it's, it should not be affecting the relationship. But that's the key. 
once you guys cross a line where his finances impact what you two have going on, then again, this is where discussion needs to be had about how do we handle those moments? He has to know, for example, that he has to come talk to you. It may not be get your final approval, so to speak, but it has to at the very least be a willingness to sit down and ex ex discuss the issue with you. You have to be open-minded to what's going on with him. But I feel the need to say this. I know some of you may have been in this situation and what you saw, again, was a mother taking advantage. And so now you may have an opposition to what he's doing and it becomes this big old fight because he feels like, well, it's my mother. I have to give her what she needs. And again, this, this is the point I made in, in number one. That might just be showing you that this man is not ready to be your future husband. Because can you deal with this continuously? Can you deal with a man that even when it undermines the quality of your relationship with him, undermines the financial stability of you and his relationship, that he is going to disregard that because he has to help his mother? And I would argue if a mother loves her son and knows this is going to cause problems, she would step back or she would find another avenue. But there's many mothers who don't care. They don't care because, again, they don't respect that woman or the relationship. So all in all, I may have missed a couple things here, but you got to consider all the potential areas that can cause problems when it comes to his mother and address all of them and set those boundaries as soon as possible. All right. Now, before I get to the next point, let me add another quick thing that would apply to boundaries with mothers. This, this can apply to boundaries with basically, basically any family member or friends, but let's focus on mothers. It's the sharing of information with that mother that can lead to negative perceptions, all right? Some people, naturally, some men may have a relationship with their mother where when things are not going well, she is the shoulder to cry on. She is the one to run to and vent to. And what unknowingly or, you know, without malicious intent tends to happen is now the mother develops a skewed perception of the woman because all she keeps hearing is this negative stuff. Because when he's good, he's just enjoying his life. But she keeps hearing these negative stories that he needs help with. So to her, it's like this woman is stressing my son out. <laughs> she, she is causing problems. And so now the mother's attitude towards you, towards that woman is due to being fed one-sided information, all right? So I think it's important to establish that, listen, if you have that kind of relationship with your mom where you're going to be talking to her about things, you need to make sure you're giving her the good and the bad. You need to make, make sure it's balanced, you know what I'm saying? As best as possible, so that she doesn't walk away only thinking one thing, and that can lead to the demise of that relationship. All right, so next up on this list, and please hear me clearly. Let me explain it because the way I phrase this might trigger you at first, but again, you know, it's always with love and an intent to help and bring clarity. So the next boundary you need to set with men in relationships is when your no means no. Let me explain. So I know naturally, one, this is not just about sex. Because I know when we hear the phrase, no means no, we're thinking sexual stuff, all right? That's a part of it too. We'll get to that in a second. But what I'm saying is, just in the general sense of saying, no, I can't do that, or no, I'm not okay with that. What I have seen for a lot of women is this tendency to overstretch yourselves, do too much, trying to you know, gain the approval of this man or trying to keep him happy. And don't get me wrong. I think it's amazing when you're, when you're, when you're willing to do for that man and pour into him and, and you're willing to accommodate him. That's great. So we don't ever want to make that be a negative thing. But I do think that some of you go past your own boundary of what's too much. And, and you're not speaking up for yourself and learning how to say, no, I, I don't want that or no, that's not OK or no, that's unacceptable. So, again, it, it could be with the way he talks to you. It could be uh, just overall how he treats you, whatever it is. 
You've got to be willing and able and stand confidently in your no. And understand that a man who loves you will respect and honor it. And a man who loves you, once he starts to learn what might be, okay, for example, just thinking that you're super duper tired right now, all right? The more in tune with you that he is, the more he might realize, you know what? This ain't the time to be asking her to make me some food. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about a, a very simple example. But like, yeah, some man become so oblivious to the woman, doesn't realize she's super tired, she's burnt out, and it's like, yo, go make me a sandwich or go do this for me. And it's like, no, bruh, <laughs> like, give me a break. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. And again, if he loves and respects you, he is going to have no problem with that. So you got to get comfortable with it. Now, I, this is just throwing it in, even though we're talking about relationships with men, I just want to say, learn how to say no to people in general. I just have to throw that in there because again, the woman who tends to struggle saying no in relationships it tends to struggle with other individuals as well. And a lot of people, they keep coming to you and taking and taking and taking because you always seem willing to do it and you make it seem like, I'm okay, I got it. When it's no, it's tearing you apart. It is draining you and you need to protect your peace as well. But let's go a little deeper because I did say this is partially sexual as well. Here is why, and again, please understand I'm, exp I'm only breaking this down because this has happened so many times to individuals and it can create a lot of confusion. He needs to learn when your no really means no because, and for the record, any man listening, all right, if a woman says no, you just go with the no, all right? However, I know that that becomes tricky because, let me tell you why, especially in relationships. A lot of men have experienced situations where the woman said no, but did it in a like cat and mouse game type of thing, all right? As in wanting him to pursue more. I'm gonna be real with y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all a quick story, don't judge me, but this is what it is, all right? I remember back, uh, like I wanna say maybe first year in college or something like that. Long story short, meet a woman, we're talking, boom, boom, everything's cool. One night, I go to visit her. We're talking. We're hanging out. You know, we get a little playful, all right? I make a little move. She says, no. Cool. I'm, I'm not going to push, right? So I, I let it go. We talk some more. I leave. It was late at night, but it, was, but it was actually basketball being played at my cottage. So I ended up going to play basketball real late at night. While I'm playing basketball, she hits me up, and she was like, you know, why'd you, you know, she, 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 I forgot how it was said, but essentially she said, when she brought up me not making more of a move. And I said, you told me no. And she says, I wanted you to try harder. Okay. Like this is seriously a true story. And, and please believe this has happened to a lot more men than you think. Now I was young. Don't judge me. I took my behind right back. <laughs> I went back and I, I tried a little bit harder and some things happened. All right. Happily, consensually happened. Okay. It was all good. But do you understand how confusing that can be to now some guys where they don't understand this final no. They don't understand when no, you're not playing with them right now. You're not just trying to be coy. This is really no. So what now happens in a lot of relationships and even marriages, for example, you'll have the man, I, ha I hate to use this word, but pestering the woman for sex, pestering his partner for sex, does not know when to let up. Now, we're not talking about situations where men cross abusive lines and, and take it to that level. No, but they cross annoying lines. <laughs> they cross stressful lines, okay? Sometimes the woman may just say, all right, just shut him up. Let me just go ahead and do this. And sometimes it ends up in a fight or he ends up being salty, whatever it is. But I think part of, part of the problem is also understanding what your no, when your no is no. So having that discussion with your partner about when like, listen, when I say this, and I would even add like to, to ensure that he understands when this is like not the moment to be pushing any further. 
is maybe having an additional phrase or something that we agree upon. Like I'm just using it as a simple example. If you say to him, listen, when I say today is not the day, <laughs> that's, that means shut it down. Don't push any further. You're going to piss me off. You're going to cause a problem if you go further than this. All right? Have, letting him know that in advance so that he understands what your boundary really is, what your no really is. Because again, I've just seen a lot of people not be on the same page and not understand when this is only making things worse. And the man is really oblivious to that. So establish that boundary of when your no really means no. All right, so before I get to the next point, a lot of people are asking me for coaching, needing advice, needing your personal questions answered. Well, I have an amazing opportunity for you. Join my special coaching program. Go to receivingmyblessings.com. Sign up today. You're going to have modules and videos on tapping into your feminine energy, meeting relationship-minded, how to meet relationship-minded men, uh, finding your purpose, hearing God more clearly, uh, healing from your path. The list goes on and on. Plus, we do live Q&As where I answer your questions. So many women's lives are being changed by the program. You're going to see amazing results. So don't hesitate. Click that link in the description or in the comment section or go to receivingmyblessings.com. All right, so I, I had a, a several more, but for the sake of video length, I'm probably gonna cover a couple more. And then we'll probably have to do a part two on this because there's a lot more to talk about. But let's jump on the next one. The next boundary you need to set with men in relationships are boundaries with other women and exes. All right. Now, let's start with exes. Again, not everyone is going to have this issue come about. And for some of you, it's almost like, why are we even talking about an ex? They should be out the picture altogether. The unfortunate, or and to some people, maybe they don't see it as an unfortunate thing, but the reality for many people is that some still have relationships, friendships with exes, okay? And if you are a person who is okay with that, so be it, all right? I, I'm not here to say that no situation that involves friendship with an ex can, can't ever be healthy or successful. I do think that in many cases, that's playing with fire. I, I, I do in many cases question why you must still be a friend with your ex, all right? But we're not gonna get deep into that. That's a whole different video. What we are gonna talk about is what are you okay and comfortable with? So this is again where it kind of connects to learning how to say no. A lot of women are not okay and happy and comfortable with their man still having association, friendship, whatever, engaging with their ex. But in many cases, they swallow their pride or they, they, they bite, bite the bullet on it and don't say anything because they don't want to piss them off or maybe he's already showed resistance to it. Maybe he tried to call you out as being insecure and in trying to not seem like you're insecure, you try to deal with it. But it is still bothering you and you've got to be honest and forthcoming about it because if not, you're just letting the thing fester and get worse and get worse and get worse and what happens is your, your skepticism in that area towards him and his ex and their situation, their relationship, is going to pour over into other things and pour over into not trusting him in general, all right? Wondering what is he doing with other women. But again, or what you have to do is, aside from being honest, is just saying what it is. Like, listen, if you're not cool with this whole ex thing, be real with it. If you are cool with a friend, somebody can be friends with their ex, well, what is acceptable behavior? What is acceptable engagement with this individual? Because, for example, um, it's one thing to go over a platonic friend's house to help them out real quick. Let's say, for example, your man has an ex that he's friends with and has another woman that he's friends with. Let's say the woman that he's friends with not the ex, you've met her, you're cool, you met both of them. 
And just for the sake of giving more context, let's just say this other friend is not someone you, you are threatened by whatsoever. You look at her and you're like, yeah, he would never go for her. That, I believe that to be friendship. I don't have no problem, right? So if that friend called him and said, hey, I need help with my computer, you might be like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go help her out. You're not sweating it. But if the ex called and said, I need help with my computer, you might be like, you ain't going to her house by yourself. You're not going to be alone with her. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Like what you may be okay with in some scenarios, you're going to be much more sensitive to, or you may be much more sensitive to when it comes to that ex. So you've got to discuss again, what is okay and not okay. But yes, this also applies to women in general, uh, female friends in general. What is acceptable? So for example, this is my own thing. But some of y'all may agree with it. I remember like I, I once had a conversation with one of my really good female friends. This was a very long time ago. And I think we were talking about talking at like two in the morning. And I had said to her, I said, well, listen, I hope you, re you realize when I get in a relationship, we ain't going to be on the phone no two in the morning. You ain't calling me this late. Like I'm, I let you slide with this type of stuff now because I'm available. I'm free to do what I want. But once in a relationship, like, I don't even need my woman to say that. I don't care if she says she's okay with it. No, you cannot call me past, unless it's an emergency. Ain't no calls from other women past this time. I don't want, I don't want that nonsense in my house. I don't want what that kind of drama that can cause. No, no, don't do that. So whatever your thing is, whatever you deem appropriate phone call times and, and things of this nature, or even, listen, it's like, yo, he gets on the phone with friends, but he want to leave the room when you're around. Like, wait a minute. Nah, if, you, if these are your friends, you should be able to talk to them in front of me. It should not be some kind of sneaky thing, okay? So, and listen, unless you're generally okay with, with that behavior, so be it. I'm always going to give you the, the free, not give you the freedom, you have the freedom to do as you please. But I'm giving you things to consider. And so whatever it is, discuss those things, all right? Dis discuss, uh, hell, even when it comes to dancing, I don't know why I'm thinking about dancing with friends, but dancing and, and what's it appropriate dancing or not with women in general. I once had a discussion with a woman. I said, hey, if, if I'm at a club and you're not there, is it disrespectful to you if I dance with a woman? And if it's okay, what, what line is unacceptable? So w she may say, oh, well, I don't care if you dance with a woman, but if she's twerking all on you and doing all this stuff, that's a problem. Okay, now, now we know what the boundary is. You know what I'm saying? The same way a man would be m more than willing to tell you what his boundaries are for disrespect when he's not around. So we have to cover all those bases Again, as soon as we can, so we can eliminate these unnecessary fights and nonsense that occurs. All right, and so last but not least, and again, I told you there's gonna be a part two because I have more boundaries to discuss, but we're gonna leave today's video on boundaries with social media, all right? Plain and simple, we live in a world today where social media is a significant part of a lot of people's lives, and how people behave on there can lead to a lot of fights and a lot of issues. And again, what I've seen, the, the, the common occurrence is that one example is women taking issue with men liking pictures. This is just one example. And there's this idea from the woman that why would he think this is okay? But then there's the idea from the man. It's like, why is this a big deal? And so this is something that we need to, again, agree upon in advance. Now, listen, I'm not here to tell you what should be OK and what should not be OK, because at the end of the day, even if I said to you, oh, liking a picture is not a big deal. If it disturbs you to the point where it's going to cause problems in your relationship, then guess what? It still matters. And I don't want to dismiss how you feel. I do want you to also be willing to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, why does this bother me? What is the real concern here? So for example, like for me as a man, I'm just going to give you my side. 
If I'm in a relationship, I really don't care what my woman is liking on Instagram. She could like some buff dude who's flexing his muscles. I really don't care, all right? But I'm very free-spirited in that way. To me, the line being crossed is you better not be in that man's DMs, okay? Like, you DM him, okay, we got a problem. Now you disrespecting me. But liking his posts, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And don't be sending no extra flirtatious emojis in his comment section either, all right? You want to send a, oh, that's, you want to send a supportive comment? Cool. But, you know, heart eyes and all that? Okay, I'm going to look at you like you're crazy. So these are my lines, you know what I'm saying? But again, you have to establish what are yours. What is, what is acceptable and unacceptable to you? But the point I was going to make was that the reason, you have to ask yourself, why would I be bothered by the liking of a picture? See, I'm not bothered by the like of a picture because I don't see that as this is going to turn into something. I am bothered by sliding in the DMs because to me, that means you're trying to do something here. Okay, you, or you're increasing the chances of something going down. And knowing how men are, if you're an attractive woman sliding his DMs, well, you're asking for something to now occur. Okay, and so now, again, I'm gonna look at you like you ain't serious about being in this relationship because clearly you're over here trying to entertain this man. So, again, this you have to be honest with yourself about what is the real fear and concern here, and also. Don't overlook the fact that are you nervous about his behavior because his behavior outside of social media shows something consistent with a man you have to be concerned with. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Basically, what I'm saying is if this man is already in regular life, behaving in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, crossing boundaries, flirting with women, being inappropriate, then rather than focus on the fact that he likes the picture, let's acknowledge the fact that maybe he's just, he's already showing you he's not serious. Forget the liking of the picture. His behavior otherwise says he is not serious. Focus on that. I've seen a lot of women get so caught up in the battle of social media behavior that they're overlooking the outside, the overall relationship behavior that still tells you he's not it. All right? So discuss these things, get to an understanding about them, we can make an argument here and there that, again, that some of these things should not, I don't want to ever say should not, don't have to be a big deal, all right? But if they are to you, then you have to have deeper discussions because maybe in having that deeper discussion, you'll uncover the things that help you find peace in this situation and resolve matters in a way that it will no longer be a problem for you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on the five big reasons why men keep wasting your time. Why are these men wasting your time? So let me break it down for you and get right to it. Now, listen, I have a number one reason at the very end of this, but I want to list a couple of reasons that maybe